Hi guys, it's Rick Shields down here at Quest Golf Studio here in Lytham, and I've just got back from St. Anne's Old Links testing these new Nike Method Origin putters. I've got two styles. I'm going to talk about the styles and the technology that have gone into these putters and give you a little bit of an insight to how I felt like they kind of worked. Um, starting off with the head cover, nice and big and squashy. Leather, furry inside, quite a cool little touch. Get rid of that. So two putters we've got, two different styles. I'm going to come back to the styles in a moment because you really got to look quite closely to see the biggest differences between these two. But let's go with the technology behind these putters first. So what Nike have done, and apparently this is what they do every time they bring a product out, they've taken information from their athletes, their best players in the world, the Rory McIlroy's of this world, and said, what do you want? What do you want in a putter? And apparently the most resounding response was something very simple. Something with simple ideas, nothing too flashy. So Nike have taken that and gone, well, I'll tell you what, let's try and make something simple, but pack it full of technology. And apparently that's what they've done. This new method origin putter is a three-piece design. It's got the face panel, which has got technology and I'll come to in a moment. It's got the back panel, which changes between the putter shapes. And then in between those two sections is this RZN or RZN material, which is resin. Resin they've used in their golf ball, resin that they now use in their putters. And apparently this resin, I've had kind of mixed responses with it. I'll give you a little bit of an idea of how I felt with it. Let me talk about what they're saying first. The resin is supposed to help continue the energy even on off-centered hits. So off-centered hits, that resin is supposed to kind of almost bounce back to a certain degree to still make the ball travel the distance it should travel. The resin gets thinner the closer to the middle of the face because apparently when you hit more in the middle, it's a softer feel and more of a dampening of the feel. I noticed that. I noticed that quite a lot. For me, I noticed on off-centered hits, it sounded clicky, almost like you were hitting plastic. When it off-centered hits, when I hit towards a toe, which is my tendency, it felt like I was hitting something made of plastic and I didn't like the sound of it. I didn't massively like the feel of it, but I did notice performance still did what it should have done. I didn't see that it finished massively short. I was quite impressed. Off-centered hits seemed to still perform better, but for me, I couldn't get used to that sound, that click, that plasticky kind of feel to it. And that is that resin. Centered hits was a different story. It felt softer. I didn't get that clicky response, which I didn't massively like. And it felt more of a dampening because that resin gets smaller and has less of an influence on uncentered hits. So when you actually hit the middle, which was quite unusual because there was some puts I was like click and then other puts like there was no noise, which is very bizarre. So that's the resin technology behind it. I think if you can get used to that click, and the ball still gets to the hole, you can probably get used to that click, if I'm honest with you. Then, it, then they've got polymetal grooves on the face. So grooves that have now been extended all the way to the toe and the heel, but go in sort of a V shape to, towards the bottom of the putter. That's apparently making the ball roll better. Now, again, there was a couple of puts when I was just at St. Anne's, where I honestly, as soon as I hit it, I never thought it was going to get to the hole. But it, it felt, it just seemed like it continued to roll. There wasn't much of a difference between a put when I've hit it badly and a put when I'd hit it well, which is good for a putter. Statement from McElroy, and obviously <laughs> McElroy has his Nike hat on. He said he gets better roll on longer puts. And I could kind of see a little bit of that. I could honestly. Um, so quite impressed with the performance and the technology behind it. I was, I was quite impressed with that. Um, moving now into the two different styles. So there's the B1 and the B201. And from the un untrained eye, they almost look quite identical, but there are differences. The B101 is very sharp in its edges, very kind of clean cut. Simple design, bladed finish with a Nike tick at the back and then the alignment line going through the two parts of the putter that separate where the um, resin is. Bent neck, so obviously that shaft is slightly ahead of the, of the face, but very sharp in its lines, very classic sharp lines. The B201 
looks similar, but it's got much more rounded features. So the edges of the putter, certainly the back of the putter is much more rounded, like, the, like it's been smoothed off. And the B201 is the one that McElroy uses. So he said, I want a putter that looks identical to my original putter, but I want it to perform better. And apparently that's what they've kind of tried to make. And I, honestly, I did see some levels of improvement. I actually was quite impressed. I just hated that click noise when I hit off center. For me, the one that I liked the look of the best was the B101, the sharper edged. But oddly, I seem to, to hold more putts with the more rounded shape. But that's just kind of preference. I like the sharpness of the edges because I found it slightly easier to align up. When I've got nice sharp edges, I have a line on my ball and I've got a line across the face as well, across the uh, ball as well. I found all the straight edges very easy to align up. I found the rounded edges not quite as easy. Moving into the different components of the grip as well, quite a nice lambkin grip. It's much thicker at the back of the grip, at the top of the back, it kind of slants backwards. It's quite a thick grip as well. I quite like that. I don't like it to be too thin. That's quite, because I use a thicker grip anyway. But that is a conventional size grip, but it is thicker than standard. Um, and it felt very nice as well. Both of these putters are on, the, on the Nike chart are suited to a slight arc. So a putting stroke that has a slight arc to it. You know what? I, I think they've done a, a relatively decent job there of, of a simple design, but packed it full of technology. There are weights in the toe and the heel as well, which I would I would imagine just helps with support. I didn't notice much of that. Um, but yeah, that, that click, I think the only way you can really get to know that click is if you try it yourself. And and I didn't, I wasn't testing it with the resin ball. And I could imagine, because I didn't, I wasn't a massive fan of the resin ball. I think if you hit this putter with the resin ball, it'll just feel like you're hitting a toy set. They'll feel very plasticky in the sound of it. But, if it performs, then maybe you can get used to that. Um, interesting styles, interesting designs. I'm sure there's going to be more models coming out as well. Probably there already is. But these are the only two I've got at the moment. Um, not bad at all. I think they've, they've done a, a, very, a very clean job on these putters. Um, I think they look very smart as well. Guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. It's nice to get on the putting green. Nice surface at St. Anzo Links and test some putters. More putter testing will be coming up soon. Now I'm getting slightly better at putting. Um, and that was good. I enjoyed that. Thanks for watching, guys. Do subscribe. What do you think about the new Nike Method putters, Method Origin putters? Have you had a Nike putter before? Would you try one? Would you stick one in the bag? Um, and we'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching and see you next time.